Emily. You can't move, Emily. You have to sit back there. Right. Bad juju. Sure, again, thanks for joining us um, today. Little thoughts on Michigan State. Obviously, uh, you know, after watching the film, you know, I think it was probably the best that we've played offense, defense, special teams in all three phases. Was not perfect by any means or any stretch, but uh, I thought all three phases did some really good things uh, in the game against Michigan State. Uh, Michigan State. But what excites me most is that we still have so much more room to grow um, as a as a team and. You know, anytime you can come in and make corrections and show where we left a lot of meat on the bone, per se, uh, when it comes to our execution in all three phases, it's definitely um, great to be able to grow from those things with a win. Um, we've just got to continue to put the work in Monday through Friday, like we talk about, uh, to be able to reap the benefits of the success on Saturday. And I think our guys have really bought into it. Um, that mindset uh, will continue to be um, the way that we prepare as we head into Purdue. You know, when you talk about Purdue, I can tell you this is a team, um, really well coached team. You watch the tape, uh, they've lost, I think, two games by one score to two, two top 25 teams. Uh, the first game against Penn State, you know, was a game that I, I thought had very easily could have gone in a, another direction for them um, to go up and beat Minnesota. Um, a big win for their program and it's a testament obviously to the coaching staff and those players really believing by far you know when you look at them on offense you know Aiden Aiden is a big time quarterback uh, a guy that I think has a chance to play on Sundays really talented makes you defend the whole field you know he's able to make every throw he's got two talented receivers and you know Charlie and then uh, number three both running backs really tough to tackle uh, physical runners and you know, they went up and, and they showed last week they have the ability to complimentary run the football. Um, and, and it was definitely one of the better teams that we'll face uh, from top to bottom. When you look at it on defense, I mean, it is collectively probably one of the better defenses we face. And that's including, you know, a couple of weeks ago facing Michigan. These guys are where they're supposed to be. They play with the right kind of effort. Um, they don't give up cheap plays and big plays. They just kind of keep everything in front and, and they really play with tremendous effort, which when you see teams play like that, uh, a lot of that has to go to coaching. Um, obviously, this weekend is family weekend for us. And, you know, when we took this job, we talked about developing not a football team, but a football family. And that encompasses everyone involved with our program. Uh, and we're going to rally around the parents that are coming back to see their kids that become an extended family of our program and uh, really are hopeful that uh, they come out, support us, an early kickoff here at, at noon against a really good opponent that uh, will give us everything that we can ask for. And so our captains going into the Purdue game, Fanage Gote, Rakim Jarrett, and Tarheeb Steele will lead us into this game as our game captains. And I guess with that, I'll open up to any questions. Mike, <clears throat> the second halves that uh, your defense has had this season, of you know, the adjustments, the execution to address what has been the difference this year and really there it's uh, there's just been this you know different level that you guys have hit after halftime yeah i think the biggest thing and this is i mean this is what people do on offense you know you, you script most people script openers and when you script those openers you get really exotic in the things you're looking to do because you want to stress the defense and as we say check their oil on how they adjust how they align so you see a bunch of motion shifts and some, some exotic formations and it takes a minute to kind of calm down our defensive guys because we're still, you know, we started two true freshmen at inside linebacker a week ago, 44 and number one. And, you know, with all the things that people do in these openers where they know where they want to be, it's before they kind of get settled into what exactly they want to get accomplished during the game, it puts stress on the defense. And so our defensive staff has done a good job after being able to see the things that they're trying to get accomplished settling our guys down and then coming up with the necessary adjustments to make sure we're sound. And so I think Coach Williams, the defensive staff, has really done a really good job after people get out of their openers of really being able to hone in and say, hey, here's what they're doing and being able to paint the picture, get it drawn up for our guys on the sideline for them to be able to take the adjustments, including at halftime, which, like you said, the last three games, I think we played really well in the second half on defense. Hey, Mike. Um, 
It's obviously going to be a lot of good receivers on the field in this game for both teams. I'm curious, what did you see that Minnesota did against Charlie Jones in particular? Because it seemed like they kept him a little bit more under control than maybe some other teams have. Yeah, I don't know if it was necessarily what Minnesota did or the philosophy going into the game that Purdue had. Uh, it looked like to me they wanted to run the football and they they were able to line up. They got into some condensed formations. As I said, you know, 38 and 45, the two running backs ran really physical. I mean, we are going to have to really tackle these guys because they're really strong runners. And, you know, usually when you have physical runners like that, it takes having a lot of guys to the ball. So I don't think it was as much something that they did to take him out because he's a talented receiver, really nifty in the slot. Uh, their tight end, number 87, also is kind of one of those safety nets for the quarterback. So uh, I thought it was more ph philosophically how Purdue wanted to run offense that game. Hey, Coach, when you have a running back room the way, like, one game Roman can go off, another game like last week Antoine can go off, what does that do for a defense when they have to kind of game plan to get for two different guys but don't know which one is going to have the hot hand? It's funny you should say that because, you know, one of the things I've, I've learned is the more diverse you are with spreading the ball, like I know for us on defense, the first thing we look at is who they target with the football. And then you go about trying to find out ways to not allow them to target that guy. When you're diverse, and I think we had 10 different receivers that caught balls. Um, we've got four running backs that are all contributing. Um, statistically, it's maybe not great for some of our great players that we have because maybe they're not uh, being the focal point of 20, 20 targets. But I just think the more diverse you are in who touches the ball, the more they have to defend on defense. And so um, we've got a bunch of talented players in, from the skill position, including the running back room, which we've talked about from the summer on of like, we knew going into this season that we had our young running back group that was really talented. And I think it's really starting to show. And just to follow up on that, uh, you mentioned how young they are, uh, redshirt freshmen, sophomores. I was wondering, what is your future outlook? I don't know, is that too early to tell, but like, what is your future outlook for them uh, moving forward um, just for them to play well in the Purdue game I mean it's really tough to, 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 to really go beyond that because that's kind of philosophically how we're trying to build this thing one game at a time and we'll deal with all the prognostications later um, when we have a little more time to unwind but right now I need those guys to play well going into the Purdue game put the work in today tomorrow and then Saturday go out and perform Hey, Coach, kind of staying with the running backs, uh, Antoine Littleton with another another big game. What did you see from him on film that allowed him to be so successful? It's the way he practices and prepares. Obviously, he's put himself in position with his, you know, it's been much talked about, his conditioning level, the, the weight loss, uh, the way he runs. He's a, a, a load. You know, as I said on Saturday, I was disappointed that he ran out of gas there on the goal line and would have loved to see him you know, stay on his feet and plow through and put one in, which that I mean that's something I'm sure he'll put in his toolbox to understand that every play isn't up and over. Sometimes you got to get down and dirty and just kind of put your pads, get behind your pads, which uh, we'll, we'll learn from that. But really, I think it's just, uh, you know, he's one of those guys that we've known about him since he was a seventh or eighth grader. He's another one of these local products that, um, you know, necessarily we, we got in on early and just continued to feed him the Maryland brand and it's great when you see guys like him and Rock him and some of the other players that have come from this surrounding community just come here and have the type of success he's having you know hopefully it's uh, inviting to others to join Hey coach, what have you seen from Johari Branch as he's moved to center this year both from, you know, we knew, you knew he could block but what have you seen from him as far as you know making the calls and stuff like that? Um, one of our smartest O-linemen, a guy that really knows our system very well. Um, you know, we always talk about being strong down the middle, quarterback, center, nose guard, Mike linebacker, free safety. And um, by far, he's the guy that kind of is the glue for us up front, gets us in the right calls, gets us on the right people for the most part. Um, he's kind of the bully of the group. You know, he doesn't take anybody's stuff. He, he, he will fight you um, and, and really get after people during the course of a game and not just the other team, but if he doesn't feel his teammates are holding up their end of the bargain, he's not afraid to step out and become one of those leaders that we've been trying to develop with the player-led culture. And he's one of those guys that we count on for that. 
Um, I have two. First, just a quick follow up on Antoine. When when he came in at the weight he was and was struggling with conditioning, were you just absolutely committed? Like, yes, he can be a running back at this level. Was there any ever thought he would need to move? Or? No. So I mean, anybody that knows me knows my philosophy is I will never make a kid play a position they don't want to play. I mean, we moved Tank Booker over to guard during summer camp because we needed some help and. You know, three days later, he was still sulking and like, I really don't want to do it. So we moved him back over. You know, the only thing we told Antoine is that if you want to be a running back, you're going to be held to the standard of running backs with the conditioning test, with everything you do has to be done like running back and not, we can't have amend, a, 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 amendments to it because of your weight. And he has bought into every part of the nutrition, the weight lift, the, the training, taking care of his body and I mean he's one of the guys that has really I think can be a uh, a person to point to when we talk about how our program develops players um, and then I was gonna ask about game attendance I know the marketing logistics is outside of you but what are the ramifications like for your program if you guys can build this thing how does it help you with recruiting I'm, I'm assuming it the current players care a lot about what that looks like maybe um, you know, I think current players care about having the opportunity to play at the next level. Um, if you're a real competitor, you'll play in front of 100,000 or you'll play in front of one. And, uh, you know, we all know what this area brings. It's uh, the, the gift and the curse of being in a great metropolitan area where there are a lot of things to do. There's pro teams here, unlike some of these small towns, you know, where it maybe doesn't benefit us in attendance all the time. Um, it really benefits us in life after football and being able to give our guys access to what this community brings. Now, I can tell you, I've been here when we filled the shell. Um, we're kind of fair weather fans in this area. We come support you when you're up. And so, you know, it's our job to put a product out that, 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 that's moving upward that uh, makes people want to come see. And I can tell you, my phone's been ringing off the hook with, you know, all these people asking for tickets now and all of a sudden. And I'll tell them, hey, if you weren't here from the start, don't call me now. Hey, Coach, uh, now that you've, you know, the defense has had a few really good performances against some really good teams, how has your perception of that side of the ball changed here in week six compared to what you thought going into the season? Um, it hasn't changed. We, we knew that we had a veteran front seven. Um, we've sprinkled in some really talented young players like Barham and Caleb Wheatland and uh, Gavin Gibson has come in and played a lot of snaps for us. And then the two young safeties are both uh, playing pretty well. Um, we we still got a lot of room to grow though. I mean, there's still, you know, we can't just play a good second half. We've got to figure out how to do things in the first half to to minimize those opportunities the team had teams have had against us. But I can tell you as a whole, um, because of the culture that's been created down in that locker room, um, you know, our guys are playing hard. We still, but we still got a lot of room to grow. And and to me, we're. We're, we're chasing it. We're trying to chase that ability to play the perfect game. And, and we're, we're still a, far, a little further away or, or further away than we want to be. But you know what? We'll continue to work to get there. Coach, kind of a sillier question, but the DJ Khaled video that you guys posted, um, what was the reaction to that in the locker room? And what kind of impact can that have for your program just in terms of a cultural relevancy? You know, I, 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 don't, I don't even know what the reaction was in the locker room. Um, you know, I'm very fortunate that, you know, I know quite a few people. My college roommate works for the Jordan brand. DJ Cal is a Jordan brand, and my college roommate happened to be here for the game this weekend, flew back to Miami, and I guess he had a meeting with, with Khaled and basically said he was up at the Maryland game. He said he'd watched it maybe, and then uh, they sent me the video to my phone. Like he, and I was like, where'd this come from? And so I sent it over to our media people and said, do what you can with it. If it helps us, I mean, keeps us relevant. <laughs> all right, all right, <laughs> my bad. Uh, hey, Coach, I was wanna get your thoughts on Gavin Gibson. Um, you just mentioned him. Just what have you seen from him this, this, so far? Yeah, I mean, Gavin's one of those guys, he came in as a corner, can play nickel, really versatile young player. But I think the biggest thing that jumps out is that, you know, it's, all, it's like a, a baby in the crib. When you throw a snake in there, they don't really know that it's a snake, so they kind of play with it. Gavin's just so young that he doesn't even know what he's doing and it's not afraid of anything because he hasn't been conditioned by getting beat or missing plays or missing tackle. He just goes out and plays. And to me, 
that's kind of the genesis of how I want us all to play. Just not afraid to fail, not afraid to make mistakes. And when you play young players, and that's what we try to do is develop these young guys, you get that type of energy. So I love seeing um, 26 out there, the way he plays. He doesn't do always do it right. He makes mistakes, but he just plays. And to me, um, he'll be better for it in, in the years to come. Why you laugh about DJ Khaled, man?